come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Yes, we know it's dark in here. But you won't need any light to experience the terrors we have in store for you. Just keep your ears open and your imagination at work. And even in the dark, you will see such miracles as you've never known before. Yes, we said miracles because our tale concerns the miraculous. When you meet Mr. Roth, he may seem like a most unlikely person to be a miracle worker. But the gods make strange choices sometimes. And in the case of Salvador Roth, they gave him the ability to make choices of a most unusual nature. I want to make a deal, Mr. Halpert. Only it's going to sound crazy, so don't throw me out right away. You know how old I am? What the heck are you talking about, kid? I'm 26. How old are you? Now listen, are you crazy or something? Uh, oh, okay. I'm 79. If the price is right, I'll trade you my 26 for what you are. I can do it, Mr. Halpert. Just say the word. Our mystery drama, A Bargain in Blood, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Henry Slesser and stars Tony Roberts. I'll be back shortly with Act One. We promised you a story about miracles. This one begins with one of the oldest miracles in nature. The miracle of love. In a not-so-quiet booth at the Neptune Seafood Restaurant, we see a young couple. The boy is Salvador Ross. The girl is named Ruthie Maitland. And Sal is looking into her lovely brown eyes, searching for an answer to the most important question he has ever asked anyone. Please, Sal, let's not talk about it here. This is no place to talk about it. Why not? I mean, what's the difference where we talk? You always say the same thing anyway. Well, I'm just not sure how I feel. That's all it is. Uh, you mean you are sure? You still think I'm a no-good bum won't amount to anything? I never said anything like that. Yeah, but your old man has said it to you, hasn't he? Oh, please. Let's leave him out of it. He's a real reason you won't marry me. I mean, he thinks I'm not good enough for you. Sal, people can hear us. Look, Ruthie, maybe he's right. You know, maybe I'm not good enough for you. At least that's the way he sees things. I don't have your education. I never read all the books you read. You just don't understand about my father. He's been a teacher all his life. Books and music and art. They're the most important things in the world to him. But that doesn't mean they are to me. Yeah, but he's important to you, isn't he? Yes. I love my father. I, I, I love him very much. Now that he's sick, I I have to spend a lot of time with him. Sure. Yeah. Time for him to tell you what a rotten boyfriend you picked for yourself. Oh, Sam. Factory bum who can't earn more than a hundred bucks take home a week. But don't you think money's important, Sam? When people get married, money means something. Yeah, what if I had money, huh? I mean, would that make the difference? I mean, would you say yes? Oh, Sam, then... please. Let's just finish our meal in peace. Look, I'm not touching another bite until I get some kind of answer from you, Ruthie. All right. If you insist on an answer, maybe I'd better give you one. I'm sorry, but it's no. I won't marry you. Hey, you, Ross. What are you doing up here on a catwalk? Me? Nothing. Since when do we pay you for doing not? I'm just digesting my sandwich, for Pete's sake. Can't a guy take five minutes after lunch to digest his food? Lunch hour was over a long time ago. Get back to the machine. All right, all right. Stop shoving me, you ape. Who are you calling an ape? I'm your boss, remember? If you don't want to get that nose of yours busted twice, you better start down them steps before I count three. Listen, pal, a better man than you busted my nose the first time around. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I heard about your big prize fighting career, Ross. What was it, one fight? Paperweight division? Go on, Mo! Get your hands off me! Hey, hey, look out! I'm falling! Ah. Ah. Hey, 
kid. You gonna sleep all day or what? Huh? What'd you say? <coughs> Ever since you came into the hospital, all you do is sleep. You could talk to your roommate once in a while. You have nothing to talk about. <coughs> how's, how's the busted leg? It's busted, that's all. Well, that's nothing to cry about. Not at your age. <laughs> you take a... <coughs> Take a chest like mine. That's something to cry about. You got a cold. Big deal. What cold? I got pneumonia. Double, triple. Who knows? I'm, I'm lucky. I lived to see another day. You'll live, Pop. Listen. I'll trade you that broken leg anytime. You just ask me. <laughs> All right. I'll make you a deal. You give me that little cold of yours, you can have my broken leg. Eh? You see how you like it, Pop. <laughs> you, you think I'm kidding I do it in a minute. Okay. Okay, it's a trade. My broken leg for your pneumonia. <laughs> it's a deal. <coughs> hey, hey, what's the matter with you this morning, huh? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't know. I guess I caught you cold or something. What are you talking about? <laughs> I never came near you. <laughs> well, I got it just the same. <laughs> hey, 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 Doc. Come in here a minute, huh? Pardon me, Mr. Levin. Yeah, yeah. Come in and have a look at my buddy here. He says he's got my pneumonia. I felt that very much. <coughs> I got something all right. Besides, I ain't infectious now, right, Doc? You said I was getting better. You know, come to think of it, I feel better. <coughs> Good for you. No kidding. I feel fine. Like I can get up from this bed. You know, oh! What's the matter, Mr. Levin? <laughs> my leg. My leg. What's wrong? It, it hurts. Boy, I, I can't hardly move it. I, I think my leg's broken. That's impossible. Oh, it hurts. It hurts something awful. Help me. All right. All right, I'll have, I'll have a look at it. No! Careful, don't move me, don't. The fractured all right. You must have fallen out of bed last night. I didn't fall. You think I wouldn't remember falling out of bed? Sometimes the sedation plays tricks on the mind. Mr. Ross. <coughs> yeah, what? Do you know if Mr. Levin fell out of bed last night? His leg is broken. <laughs> no, I didn't hear him fall. <laughs> hey, you really mean that? About his leg? That's how it looks to me. And I'd better see about getting that leg in splints right away. Don't move, Mr. Levin. I'll send the nurse in. Oh, how could this happen to me? How? What did I do to deserve this? Hey, Pop. <coughs> you remember a bargain? What? Your pneumonia? <coughs> Your pneumonia for my busted leg? Are you crazy or something? I wonder if my leg is... Hey, doesn't hurt anymore. It feels okay. I'm locked up with a crazy man. I'm telling you, it's true. I got your rotten pneumonia. But you got my broken leg. <laughs> seen you around. Yeah. I guess you haven't minded that much, huh, Mr. Mabel? Ruthie told me you two had broken up. Yeah, I got pretty broken up myself. I fell on the job, busted my leg. I've been in the hospital the past three weeks. Oh, sorry to hear that. Yeah, there were uh, complications, like I, uh, like I got pneumonia. Hmm. It's too bad. I'll tell Ruthie you called. Just tell her I was here, huh? Tell her I was sick, but I'm okay now. Uh, tell her I'll call her soon. All right. I'll give her the message. And uh, you could also tell her that I uh, I quit my job. I'm going to look for something better. Yes, Salvador, you do that. You look for something better. We should all try to improve ourselves. Yeah, that's that's what I'm going to do, Mr. Maitland. You wait and see. I'm going to improve myself. You sure you want another drink, Sal? I'm sure, Phil. Just put it right in front of me. Why don't you disappear? Well, you don't usually have three of those. That's because usually I can't afford it. Well, now you can, huh? That's right. Well, I'll come. I mean, if you quit your job, like you said. I got compensation from the plant, you know, for getting hurt on the job. Oh, no kidding. So uh, now you're rich, huh? Rich. I got about ten bucks left. All the rest went for expenses while I wasn't working. But at least I get something for my ten bucks. 
Well, here's what you get, Sal. Two bucks change. Boy, I wish I had what's in that register, Phil. Uh, listen, kid, be thankful for what you got. Yeah? Like what? Ah, you got hair. Huh, that's more than I got. You want the hair? Take it. Yeah, listen, I wish I could, Sal. I really wish I could. I mean, when I was your age, I had me a head of hair could knock your eyes out. Would you really like my hair? Well, uh, you know what they say, grass don't grow on a busy street. But just the same, I sure wish I had some. Yeah, maybe you can. I mean, there are all kinds of ways, you know. Oh, you mean like, uh, what are you, a transplant? Yeah, yeah, in a way. I'll transplant my hair to your head. How's that, huh? Uh-huh. Not for free, of course. Huh. Okay, what's the joke? Oh, you, you know what happened to me in a hospital? I traded an old guy for his pneumonia. How's that? It's true. He got my broken leg. I got his pneumonia. What do you think of that? Give me all the money you got in the register. You can have all my hair. <laughs> sure, Sal, anything you say. Only not tonight, huh? I'm busy. Look, you won't have anything to lose. You don't even have to pay me until afterwards. Oh, I get it now. You get yourself a haircut and then hand me the stuff in a cigar box. No, that's not how it works. Well, look, I'm not sure how it works, but let's wait and see, huh? You want your shake on it? Okay, Sal. Shake. to know young Salvador Ross. Although young Salvador Ross looks a bit older now. He may regret his bargain now, but who knows what the future will bring. Because now that he knows he has a talent for trading, perhaps Mr. Ross can trade his way into a better, brighter future. I'll be back shortly with Act Two. Still another friendly neighborhood tavern. Not the Four Leaf Clover. Salvador Ross hasn't chosen to return to the Four Leaf Clover. Not since the night when he made the incredible transaction with Phil, the bartender. The thought of visiting his own head of hair was far too repugnant for Sal Ross. Or perhaps it was because he realized how cheaply he had sold part of himself. A hundred and ten dollars. As he sits and broods into the bar mirror, looking at the gleaming reflection of his naked scalp, he cursed his own haste and plotted his next step. After all, it takes time and experience to become an experienced trader. Hey, buddy. Buddy. You spare a guy half a buck? I'll beat it, will you? Just for a bowl of soup, you know? A bowl of soup, huh? I don't know if this joint served any soup. Well, I wasn't going to have it here. It's going down the street. Come on, don't be cheap, huh? Beat it, I said. All right, all right. You don't have to get nasty with it. Hey, hey, hey. Wait a minute. What? Come back here a minute. I want to talk to you. Yeah, what about? That's a pretty good uh, head of hair you got there, Pop. What? I said, 
They said it's a nice head of hair you got there for a man your age. What are you, some kind of pansy or something? <laughs> hey, listen. How do you like to have a drink, huh? <laughs> you kidding me? Hey, bartender. Give me two more of these, huh? I'm drinking scotch, Pops. Is that all right with you? Sure, anything. I'm not particular. I didn't think you would be. Yeah. That's a real nice thick head of hair, Pop. It's kind of gray, but I guess you could dye it, couldn't you? Listen, anything you say, friend. You see a bald head of mine? Yeah, yeah. What about that? You wouldn't believe it, Pop, but I had a full head of hair myself not more than two weeks ago. What? Oh, here's your drink, Pop. Knock it down, huh? Well. Yeah. <sighs> Boy, it tastes good. Yeah, only it disappeared awful fast, did it? I guess you'd like another one, huh? Well, it's okay with you. <laughs> I tell you what, Pop. How'd you like to have a half a dozen bottles of that stuff all your own? What? You heard me. How'd you like to have a half a dozen bottles for yourself? I mean, you can have yourself a blast. That ought to last you a whole week, maybe. Well, when I get a half a dozen bottles from where? Maybe I'll make you a present of them. Why would you do that? Well, let's say maybe I'll make you a trade. Look, mister, I don't know what you're talking about. I'll make a deal with you. You are here for my whiskey. You know, I think you're nuts. Who ever heard of a deal like that? You just heard of it, Pop. And I show you my good faith to take you out right now and I'll buy you those bottles. All you got to say is yes. to tell. I drive Mr. Halpert's car. Sometimes I clean his apartment. Sometimes I tend bar for him when he gives parties. Only, uh, lately he ain't been giving too many parties. He's getting too old for that kind of stuff. How old is he, Joey? Oh, I don't know. He don't tell me stuff like that. But he's old. I gotta help him in and out of the limousine all the time. He's rich, ain't he? Sure he's rich. He's plenty rich. Joey, you... look, would you introduce me to your boss? Hmm? Huh? I want to meet Mr. Halpert. Could you arrange that? What for? He ain't hiring nobody else. Hey, what are you after? My job? Forget it. Come on. Let's shoot some pool. Ah, uh, you don't really want to play pool with me, Joey. You know I'm ten times better than you are. I clean you. <laughs> yeah, I know you're the shark of all time. But come on and play just the same. I want to meet Mr. Halpert, Joey. I got a proposition for him. See, something that'll interest him a whole lot. Forget it, Sal. He don't see people. He hardly ever leaves the apartment nowadays. It's important. It's very important. Ah, come on, Sal. He's not going to talk business with somebody like you. Big bankers and people like that are trying to see him all the time. He won't even talk to them. Listen, Joey, look. You get me in to see Mr. Halpert, I'll give you something for your trouble. Like what? I got no money. But I'll give you something else. You can have my game, Joey. You what? I swap you my pool game for a meeting with your boss. I mean it. You say the word, you can play as good as me. You mean like you'll coach me? I don't have to. You don't. Look, you'll play as good as me, that's all. I can do things like that. I can't explain how, but I can. 
Just say yes, Joey. That's all you gotta say. And if you start shooting real good, look, will you get me in a scene, Mr. Halpert? multimillionaire Wayne Halpert, 79, has caused investors to shed large amounts of the shares in W. Halpert Enterprises. <laughs> I, I was smart to take mine in cash. Yeah, I got it all in cash. What, what was that, Mr. Ross? I know where he is, you know. He's on that yacht of his, sailing down the Mediterranean with all those pretty girls aboard. Look, Mr. Ross, maybe you'd better get to bed. Yeah, 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 I'm very tired. You're a kind young man. What did you say your name was? Albert, sir. Yes, Albert. You're a very kind young man. How old are you, Albert? 
Uh, 19, sir. You're 19, only 19, huh? Well, you got your whole life in front of you, haven't you, Albert? Oh, yes, sir, I guess so. How much you earn in this hotel, Albert? Well, not too much, sir, including tips about um, $75 a week. How long do you think it'd take you to save a thousand bucks, Albert? Me? <laughs> about 20 years. What would you give to have a thousand bucks in your pocket right now, Albert? Are you kidding? You're only 19 years old. But what if you were 20, huh? Would that bother you a lot? Of course not. 19, 20? What's the difference? It's just one year. That's all, Albert. One year. Did you make a deal like that? You swap one year for a thousand bucks? Oh, boy, would I? <laughs> good, Albert. That's good. Then I'm going to write you a check right now. Hey, you really mean it, Mr. Ross? That's right, Albert. Anytime you want to sell more years, you come see me, huh? You can tell your friends about it, too. I'm always good for ready cash. So Salvador Ross has started to buy back the years he gave away. Tomorrow morning, he'll be 78 years old. He'll probably celebrate with an unbirthday party. Wouldn't we all like to have that privilege? To lose the weight of our years instead of adding them on? Or is it such a privilege? We'll find out when I return shortly with Act Three. luxurious suite in the city's most elegant hotel. And Mr. Ross has been a very busy man. Day after day, a stream of young people has come to his door to make an astonishing transaction. One by one, Salvador Ross has regained the years he gave away. Until finally, at a price of only $53,000, Sal was able to look in the mirror and see the young man he used to be. But now, there was a great difference. Because the young man who looked back at him was a very rich young man. And when he paid his next visit to the home of Ruthie Maitland, he drove to her residence in the back of a chauffeur-driven limousine. Who is it? It's Salvador Royce, Mr. Maitland. Well, what do you know? Back from the dead, Salvador. Like me, hmm? How are you, Mr. Maitland? It's been a long time. You can see how I am, Salvador. You see the wheelchair, don't you? Your eyes are still good, aren't they? Yes, sir. My eyes are all right. That's more than I can say for myself. You've been sick, Mr. Maitland? I've been sick. I've been hit by lightning in the brain. Pardon? They call it a stroke, Salvador. You see, I can't move this side of my body. I'm really sorry, Mr. Maitland. Uh, is Ruthie here? Yes, Ruthie is here. Poor Ruth is always here. Ruthie, come out. You've got company. Where's it, Pop? Come see for yourself. Mr. Maitland, I uh, just want you to know that things are different with me since I saw you last. Things are a lot better. I'm glad for you, Salvador. You told me to go out and prove myself, and uh, that's what I did. Sal. Hello, Ruthie. Sal. Oh, for heaven's sake, I... I haven't heard from you in months. Yeah, I know. I've, I've been busy, you know. A lot of things have been happening to me. That's the way life is, Salvador. Things happen to people. Some good, some bad. Uh, Lucy, you think you could uh, come out with me for a little while, huh? Could I take you to dinner or something? Oh, I... I don't think so, Sal. My daughter doesn't like to leave me alone. She thinks she has to watch over me night and day. Oh, come on, please, Lucy. Just for a little while, huh? I gotta talk to you. I got a car downstairs. A car? Yeah, yeah, a car and a driver. So we could just uh, go for a ride. I just don't understand how it could have happened, Sal. I mean, you had nothing just a few months ago. Now everything's so different. I just hit it big, Ruthie. I got lucky. You're not... Doing anything dishonest? No, no, I swear I'm not. I just, uh, you know, I come into some big money, that's all. An old man. He left me a lot, a lot of money. Someone I did a favor for. But it so incredible. And you look so different. Even your face looks different. <laughs> hey, 
That's your nose, Ruthie. That old broken nose of mine. It's gone. I swapped it. For, I mean, uh, had it fixed. I don't know what to say. I just overwhelmed. Well, say you see me again, Ruthie. That's all I want to hear. <sighs> I mean, I know you turned me down when I asked you to marry me, but uh, at least see me again, huh? Well, oh, yeah, of course. Only it, it can't be too often. You saw my poor father. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's too bad about what happened to him. He's so terribly ill, Sam. He needs me. Yeah, I need you too, Ruthie. <laughs>
I wouldn't want to leave my Ruthie in the hands of the wrong person. You mean in me, huh? Leave us in peace, Salvador. But I didn't come here to talk about Ruthie, Mr. Maitland. Then why did you come? It's you I, I came about. I mean, I came to talk to you. Look, I I know what you think of me, and I didn't come here to change your mind. I came here to talk business. Business? I want to make a deal with you. I want to buy something you got. <laughs> Look at me. I have nothing. Even this wheelchair is rented. You still got something I want. I'm willing to pay for it any price you name. You could use money. I know that. Not for yourself, not... I mean, money for Ruthie. Money to take care of her when she's alone. I have nothing to sell, don't you understand? Yes, you do. You got something I need real bad. I don't know what you call it exactly. Ruthie says it's like, uh... Compassion. What kind of crazy talk is this? Do you even know what you're talking about? A lot of people thought I was crazy when I offered them this kind of a deal, but I've done all right. I take my word for it. I've done great. You think you can buy a thing like that? And pay for it like eggs? I know I can. All you do is say yes. I'll give you any amount of money you want. I think maybe you don't feel well, Salvador. Look, a hundred thousand bucks, huh? How does that strike you? Would you make a deal for a hundred thousand? You're really serious. I'll bring you the check tomorrow morning. It's enough money to take care of you for the rest of your life. And Ruthie, too. You know you're a crazy man, Salvador. Crazy. But all right. If that's your insanity, all right. Oh, 8 o'clock. I set the alarm so early for. Uh, may as well get up. She says a funny dream last night. I was I was crying about something. Funny. Crying in your sleep? Hey, look at that. I still got tears on my face. Jeez, I don't think I've cried since I was six years old. I feel so different today. What's the matter with me? I don't feel like myself. I feel like I want... I feel like I want to go outside. I want to look at people. I want to talk to them. <laughs> Hey, what a nutty thing. I, I want to be with people. Uh, hey, what is this? Is this what Ruthie was talking about? That compassion stuff? Oh, what's so great about it? All I feel is sad. I feel like... I feel like crying. I feel like the whole world was on my shoulders. What's so great about feeling like that, huh? Ruthie. I gotta see Ruthie. I gotta tell her what happened to me. I gotta hold her in my arms. My sweet little Ruthie. <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Mayton. Come in. Did you bring the check? Yes, sir. I brought it. All right, let's get it over with. Is it certified? Yeah, it's a bank check, Mr. Mayton. It's uh, good as cash. Put it on the table. Yes, sir. Uh, is Ruthie up yet? She's up, but she's not here. Oh, well, where is she? I sent her on an errand. Oh, I'd really like to see her, Mr. Maitland. Uh, <laughs> I, guess, I guess what I really mean is uh, I'd like her to see me, you know. I'd, I'd like her to realize I've changed. Mm -hmm. You've changed, have you? Yeah, she'll be able to tell, too, you know. It may take a little while, but she's going to know. I see and then she'll say yes to your marriage proposal, hmm? Well, I, I think she will, yeah. And I'll, I'll make her happy, Mr. Maitland. I swear I will. I'll, I'll do everything I can to make your daughter happy. You're still a bum, Salvador. Maybe you're rich now, or maybe you've got a big smile on your face, but in my eyes, you're still a bum. I, I know why you feel that way about me, Mr. Maitland. I know, but everything about me is different now. I swear that. And I want us to be friends. You gave me $100,000, Salvador. Do you need my friendship, too? Well, it's what I want more than the money. Sorry, Salvador. I don't have any friendly feelings to give you. This is what I have for you. Hey. Hey, Mr. Maitland, what are you doing with that shotgun, huh? I kept it around here for robbers. The neighborhood is full of robbers. But now the biggest robber of all is right here in front of me. Mr. Maitland, 
Put the thing down, will you? Be careful. You're not taking the most important thing in my life, Salvador. Stop, Mr. Maynard, please. Have mercy. Please. Sorry, Salvador. I don't have that anymore. No mercy. No compassion. <laughs> incredible rise and fall of Salvador Ross, a man who pulled himself up by his own bootstraps and who finally fell before the merciless blast of a loaded shotgun, all of which goes to prove that it isn't easy to strike the right bargains in life. Sometimes we make bargains with the devil without even realizing it, and sometimes we create our own devils the way Salvador Ross did. I'll be back shortly. What would you have given up if you were Salvador Ross? Which one of your blessings would you trade for someone else's? It's an interesting speculation and one which makes most people realize that they'd rather not trade at all. And speaking of swaps, thank you for swapping that television program for this one. We trust that you've seen pictures in your own mind that no television screen could ever match. Our cast included Tony Roberts, Mandel Kramer, Evie Juster, Robert Dryden, Gil Mack, and Jack Grimes. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Contact, the 12-hour allergy capsule, Buick Motor Division, and Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.